Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We have that opening song, The Love of Christ, uh, manifest to us that the King of Love, our Shepherd, is. We hear in the Gospel of the love of God manifest, especially in Jesus Christ, invites us to rejoice. The meaning of our rose vestments that we wear for this fourth Sunday of Lent, a meaning that we're rejoicing as we look forward to the dawn of that resurrection, that dawn of victory. It's also an invitation to us in a special way here as we stand kind of the year into the pandemic, so to speak. It was on Friday the 13th of March that we, uh, the diocese decided, as much of the world, to temporarily suspend the in-person services. We opened again in June and have been kind of moving forward in different ways since then. But uh, just so much that comes to mind thinking of this last year. That again, the symbolism of the rose is the dawn beginning, or the sun beginning to rise at dawn in the purple of Lent towards the, the light of Easter. An invitation to us to be renewed in the presence and the power of Christ in the sacrament of the mission and the opportunity before us as a parish and the church. We ask the Lord to strengthen us, to renew us, to continue to give us that grace of redemption and new life. We take a moment then as we call to mind these intentions and also call to mind our sins. The Lord may prepare us to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed memory of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of our fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people in his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. Until the land has retrieved its last Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah. The Lord inspired King Osiris of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, King of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me. And he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. 
Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to you God. God. The responsorial psalm. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forgot you. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forgot you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept. When we returned to Zion, on the aspens of that land we hung our harps. Let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. For there our captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs. And our despoilers urged us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. How can we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forgot you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not. If I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let, Let my tongue be silent if I ever forget you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God who is rich in mercy because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Raise us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance, that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned. But whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come toward the light, so that his works may not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have two different images in our readings today of the Old Testament of life coming from death. That the Gospel speaks of 
Moses lifting up the serpent in the desert. This refers to a time that they were afflicted with snakes, and the Lord instructed uh, the Moses to make a bronze serpent to raise it on a, a stick, a staff, in the desert, so that everyone who looked at it would be healed. To this, as Jesus says, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. This is actually the origin of our practice of the crucifix, that this is where Jesus is the Son of Man lifted up. That Fulton Sheen points out that the serpent on the pole was the snake, but without the venom. That in looking at this was an invitation to the Lord to receive uh, healing from what was lacking in the, uh, the snake on the pole. That Christ on the cross has the appearance of a sinner, appearance of, a, of a, a someone condemned to death, but without sin within it. That likewise, by looking at Christ on the cross, there's an invitation to receive again what was lacking in him. That, uh, sin was lacking in him to receive forgiveness in our own life. So that our practice then of having the crucifix is uh, kind of a, a really, uh, connected then to this verse. That it's not the serpent on the pole that we look, but we look to the image of Christ on the cross. Of course, then invoking his grace in our life. That the first reading talked about the banishment of the Israelites from the Holy Land, from Jerusalem especially, in the temple. And that during the time of Cyrus, the restoration, when they were allowed and able to return back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. Again, these images of death from life, of beginning again. That all of this, again, I just see keep connecting with this invitation we have, this, this kind of one-year mark, to continue to look forward. That this Lent and Easter is a time, I think, especially of uh, being renewed in our, our outlook, being renewed in our imagination, and our, our preparation for living our mission. It's a chance to evaluate and see growth, to go out um, and continue to go forward. Though we're still not at that spot, we're able to be fully back uh, to normal, but as a spot as we continue to see how we can best go forward. I think about that first weekend, so that would have been, I think, the 14th and 15th then of March last year, trying to figure out how to do Mass online. If you remember, I had it turn the camera sideways, so if you look, I showed up laying on my side on the screen. I wasn't sure how to even flip that yet. And so lots of things we like that, trying to learn this last year. Lots of different things trying to, uh, to figure out new ways to do things. So we, again, like I said, I'm thankful for what we've been able to accomplish, but uh, want to continue to go forward, not to just kind of try to tread water, but to try to look at what we need to do to, 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 to be renewed and strengthened. One of the things, kind of as we've been talking about that, is looking and using that imagination then to look at the ways that we can recapture the, the value and the, the mission that we have. So we looked at prayer and fasting, kind of of Lent, the last two weeks. This week, the theme would be then almsgiving, looking at sharing that love of God through uh, works of mercy. And we see this, I think, also clearly in our, our readings as well. That ultimately, you know, we have this core verse that we think of, John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. That when we encounter this, it invites us to a transformation of forgiveness, a transformation to love of God, but also intrinsically connected with that love of neighbor that we want, as it talks about that, to live in the light. He end uses that image from St. John, he often uses of light and darkness. So to walk in the light. The letter to the Ephesians, um, the second reading, it says, we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God prepared in advance, that we should live in them. That it's something that brings life to us. The talk, um, the video talk I did this weekend was about the Christmas carol, Ebenezer Scrooge, the way that he is transformed. That it's something when I think back in my own life of growing in faith. Um, in high school, we did a couple mission trips, summer mission trips, and the aspect of service and that impact it made. In college, before I was uh, even thinking about seminary, uh, the Knights of Columbus, we did service things. And I think about the first one we did, it was actually the night before somebody pulled the fire alarm at like 3 a.m. at the Newman dorm, and so we all had to go out and sand in the cold and wait, you know. And So then when the, the Saturday morning, when that alarm went off and it was time to get up and go, you know, do the soup kitchen, there was a heavy temptation to just 
forget my alarm that morning, you know, and, and uh, pass it up. But I remember, you know, thank praise be to God, was able to go and just being there and being like, no, this is good. This is what I needed to do. You know, that the love of neighbor is something that, you know, putting into practice that love we receive is something that we, we need to do. That it's life giving, not just uh, to our own self, although we often receive there more than we give, but life giving in the world. It's not something we do to be seen by others, but it is something that gives a good witness to that love of God. So something as we go forward, we'll continue to look um, and how we best can live that personally, how we best can live that as a parish. Again, all these things, if I have to sum them up, because uh, I've covered, I know, a lot of different grounds in this. But back to this verse. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. That the, the temple in the Old Testament was that symbol of the presence of God, that place to encounter him. So we're invited to encounter him uh, through uh, the church. We have the image of Christ lifted up on the cross as an image, the invitation to that. And then we ask the Lord, what is his call for us this week uh, to respond to it? How in this week, something that's manageable, something that we're able to do, uh, to reach out. Maybe somebody that we feel called to reach out to, uh, a service that we can give, or even just uh, prayer or conversation, encouragement that we might give. That we continue to ask the Lord for that personal transformation, and then to share that with those that we encounter. Asking the Lord to deepen our gift of faith, let us together profess our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came out in heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became a man. For our sake he was crucified with the conscious Bible. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living. This kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The spirit of faith, let us raise now our prayers and petition. That the church be healed of all division and grow in unity, charity, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of nations promote peace and respect the dignity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That exiles and political refugees return home safely and enjoy liberty and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who care for the sick, especially those near death, be a radiant sign of God's abiding love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community of faith reflect clearly the light of Jesus Christ in its prayers and outreach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the intentions written in our parish book, for those on our cancer quilt, for those who have served in the military, living in deceased, for vocation to the ordained and consecrated life, and for Sister Sarah, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of the Church here and throughout the world, let us pray the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and the of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, trust in the hell of Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the worlds and ruin the souls. Amen. Amen.
God, we ask that you answer our prayers according to the holy will. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The offertory hymn is The Church's One Foundation. body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit.
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be condemned under my word, but only say the word, and my soul shall be condemned. God, who enlightened everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace. We may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Start by also saying a big thank you to all the staff and volunteers and everybody for all that you've done this last year to help respond to everything, especially with our teachers, with all those with health care and all other areas that I know it's called a lot of challenge and a lot of work, but uh, again, a big thank you to all those who have worked, especially for kind of moving forward. This week is spring break week, 
So we won't have school masses. Our daily masses, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, will just be at 820 for parish. Uh, there won't be a 715 separate parish mass. Friday stations this week are at St. Malachi. Um, Friday this week is also the Solemnity of St. Joseph, a special uh, day of uh, this year. Saint, uh, Pope Francis has to celebrate as the year of St. Joseph, so a special day for prayer. Invite that. Again, kind of that, that context, our encounter is spoken of in this gospel today with the love of Christ, the way that we personally do that, that mission of our parish. I'm asking the Lord to ask for your prayers as we continue to move forward as we get closer to that. One last thing I guess I should say is Easter Masses. People have been asking about how we're going to do registration for Easter Masses. So we'll start taking those on March 22nd, which will be a week from Monday. Um, so kind of like Christmas, rather than just doing the regular rotation for Easter uh, Sunday, well, it'll be Holy Thursday, Good Friday, um, Easter Vigil, and Easter Sunday, um, we'll ask for res reservations. So if you're interested in attending one of those services, contact the parish starting the week of March 22nd. And we'll kind of get everything sorted out then. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is May the Road Rise Up.